Greetings, I'm Larry Lundblad, Interim President of Minnesota State College Southeast. And on behalf of the faculty and staff, I would like to welcome you to this virtual 2020 commencement ceremony. We will begin by hearing a few words from the Chancellor of Minnesota State System. I'd now like to introduce Minnesota State Chancellor Devinder Malhotra. Greetings, students. I'm Devinder Malhotra, Chancellor of Minnesota State. Graduation is a seminal moment in your educational journey, and I know you and your families have been anticipating it for a long time. The resolve and grace you have demonstrated in persevering through your studies are all the more impressive and inspiring in light of the challenges and obstacles this global health crisis has thrown your way. Your academic accomplishments are truly amazing. Among these struggles and sacrifices, I recognize you did not get to walk across that graduation stage with your family and friends in the audience, cheering and celebrating your achievement. Your family, friends, faculty, and staff who supported you are so proud of you and your accomplishments. We are all rooting for your success. Congratulations, graduates. Good day. As interim president of Minnesota State, State College Southeast, I would like to congratulate the class of 2020. We are taking this opportunity to celebrate your success in reaching your academic goals. We want to acknowledge your disappointment in not having a traditional ceremony and celebration. However, we can still celebrate your accomplishments and the honors that you so richly deserve. Little did we know at the beginning of the academic year in August that the world would be turned upside down by the end of the year in May. You will never forget spring semester 2020. We certainly want to extend our thoughts and prayers to those who have been stricken by the disease, to those recovering, and to the family and friends of the, friends of the individuals who have succumbed to this virus. To celebrate your graduation, we have created this video. You will also receive a package from the college that includes your graduation cap and gown, diploma, graduation program, and letter of congratulations. In the fall, conditions permitting, we will hold a reception on each of our campuses for you, your family, and friends. Please watch for the invitation. We are also inviting you to return to the college next spring to take part in the graduation ceremony and have the opportunity to walk across the stage and be recognized. We all understand that this, this has taken a lot of hard work, determination, and sacrifice on your part to complete the requirements for a degree, diploma, or certificate. This year has added many challenges to reaching the finish line. Graduates, this is your time to be recognized. However, some other individuals need to be recognized as well. Your family and friends have been there for you in many ways. If you are watching this with your family and friends, please hit the pause button and thank those supporters who are with you. And take some time in the next few days to send a text or call those who helped you along the way. There is currently a lot of uncertainty. We do not know when the pandemic will end or what a post-COVID-19 world looks like. The impact on the economy is already significant, and this is affecting employment prospects. For those of you continuing your education, there is uncertainty around what the next academic year will look like. I would like to offer two strategies that will be a benefit to you as you navigate the next few months and beyond. The first strategy comes from the Stoics. The early Stoics were Greek and Roman philosophers who developed a practical set of guidelines designed to help individuals cope with life and the perils often encountered, both big and small. One of the main tenets of this philosophy that has been put into practice over many centuries down to our present day is a dichotomy of control that encourages us to distinguish between what is up to us, what is within our power and control, and what is not. In our current situation, we cannot individually control the COVID virus, where it goes and whom it affects, nor can we control the, can, can we control the economic havoc that it brings. 
However, we can control our emotional reactions and behaviors. We can choose fear, despair, and dis empowerment, or we can choose to bravely move forward, follow safety protocols, and take positive actions to mitigate the impacts. The Serenity Prayer, written by Reinhold Niebuhr, that is used by many 12-step programs, embodies this strategy. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as a pathway to peace. The second strategy is perseverance. Perseverance means not giving up. Perseverance is uh, persistence and tenacity. The effort required to do something and keep doing it until the end, even if it's hard. Another way to look at perseverance is that it involves the voluntary continuation of a goal-directed action despite the presence of challenges, difficulties, and discouragement. Perseverance is hanging in there, avoiding negative self-talk and not listening to the naysayers. It is an extension of the stoic dichotomy of control principle. Winston Churchill, the great World War II leader, embodied perseverance. It was because of his will and determination that the British people withstood several months of bombing by the Germans when Great Britain stood alone against the Nazis. Eventually, Britain emerged victorious along with its American and Russian allies. An often told story about Churchill is his famous Harrow School speech. As the story goes, Churchill was invited to be a commencement speaker at the school he attended as a boy. On the day of the event, the auditorium was packed to hear the famous wartime leader. Churchill supposedly strode to the podium in his robe and, and said, never give up, never, never, never give up, and then he purportedly sat down. As stories often go, this isn't exactly what happened. Churchill was indeed asked to be the graduation speaker. The place was packed. He strode to the podium in his robes and talked for 20 minutes. What he did say in his speech is important, and I quote, never give in, never give in, never, 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 in nothing great or small, large or petty, never give in, except to the convictions of honor and good sense. The backstory is important to understanding the man in his speech. Academically, Churchill was a poor student. His childhood was very unhappy. His parents often inattentive. At boarding schools, he was frequently the only student at the school on holidays as his parents were busy traveling and cared little about him or his emotional well-being. His military and political careers were punctuated with major disappointments. In the years leading up to World War II, many people had written him off. And yet, because of his perseverance, in response to his many personal setbacks, he persisted and is now remembered worldwide as a great leader and statesman. He never, never gave in. So in closing, as you deal with the effects of the current pandemic and set your course for the future challenges, challenge yourself to move forward in a positive way by controlling that which is in your power to do so and persevere. And remember that this stretch of disruption will pass and you will be stronger for it. Class of 2020, we need you, the state needs you. We need your enthusiasm, skills, training, ideas, innovation, and imagination. The faculty and staff here at Minnesota State College Southeast are extremely proud of you We've uh, worked with you over the uh, years, and we appreciate uh, the uh, opportunity to serve and be your mentors and guides. We wish you all the best in the years to come. Now I have the great honor to confer the degrees, diplomas, and certificates that you have earned. By the power invested in me by the Minnesota State Board of Trustees, I hereby grant you certificate, the certificate, diploma, or degree that you have earned. And now there's one more action to take. Please figuratively move your tassel 
from the right to the left side of your cap. Congratulations.